guys so i just got something in the mail that i've been planning on making a dress out of and i want to show you guys so this is a tapestry from amazon i think i got it for 15 bucks and i'm gonna make a dress out of it and i'm gonna take you guys along so I will be an art history major next year, and this is just really inspiring to me. I wrote a paper on it last semester. It's just one of my favorite paintings. Um, it's just beautiful by Van Gogh, Starry Night. So I'm gonna make a dress, and I can't wait to teach you guys how to make your own. The first thing I did was figure out how long I wanted my skirt to be. I sort of just held the fabric up against my body and moved it up and down until I got my desired length and then I put a pin in that place so I knew where to cut the fabric. Using the marking I made, I just cut a long strip of the fabric off and then I set it aside to use for the bodice and sleeves and I ended up with the perfect skirt length. Now it's time for the fun part, which is pleating the skirt. I use the fork method when pleating as I think it's a very simple and easy process. So basically what you're gonna do is take two widths of your fork, stick the fabric in the prong, and then flip it over. As you can see, the process wasn't as easy for me because one of my hands was dedicated to filming, but it would be very efficient if you had both hands to work with. Once you have your fabric pleated to the desired length that you want, you just stitch them down with a sewing machine to make sure that they stay sturdy until you attach it to your bodice. Also, though I forgot to film it, I did end up adding a slit to my skirt. To do so, I cut the slit where I wanted it to be on my leg all the way through the length of the fabric, and then I took those two pieces that I had and overlapped them so that there would be an overlapping slit, as you can see here. So if you pull it apart, you can see the whole leg, but if you don't pull apart, then it's quite a modest slit in my opinion, and it doesn't show much. I really liked how the skirt turned out, and it ended up being the perfect length. It was at this point that I realized I had no zipper to close the skirt with, so my dad drove me to Hobby Lobby to get one because I did not want to drive in the snow by myself. He also just let me wait in the car and ran in to get them for me, and it was really nice. Here's just a time lapse of me draping the bodice pattern. I tend to drape more than I use pre-made patterns because I find that it's easier to get a better fit, but there are a lot of great options out there if you don't know how to drape. I then used the pattern that I made to cut out my lining. For a bodice pattern like this, you really just sew along the seam lines and it's a very simple and easy thing to do. It only takes me a few minutes. Now, cutting out the fashion fabric is a bit more difficult because you need to make sure to pattern match, which basically means that you can see the image continuously along the bodice. So really, you line it up as close as you can to each cut to make sure that you see a continuous image like pictured here. After you've sewn together your fashion fabric and lining fabric, you're going to put those two pieces right sides together and sew along the bust line. After you sew those two pieces together, you're just going to turn them right side out and iron them nicely. Then you'll be ready to add boning. Now, I did something a little bit different on this bodice than I normally do, and that's add exterior boning so that the boning channels are more exposed. And really, you just take strips of fabric, iron the edges inwards, and sew those down on top of the garment. I like to add my boning channels along the seam lines, but I also add some in other places if I feel that it needs more support. 
Now that we have our boning in, it's time to add grommets. I think I added about five or six to each side, but you can add as many as you need. After you do that, it's now time to add the skirt to the bodice. To do this is very simple. You're just going to take the right side of the bodice and skirt, put them together, and sew along that edge. Here it is all pinned up and ready to sew. This part is optional, but I did overlock that edge. Now it's time to finish off the skirt with a zipper. I ended up using an invisible zipper because it's my preferred method, but you can use whatever zipper you liked. And after that, you could stop right here and have a nice strapless gown, but I'm actually gonna take it a step further and add some sleeves. These sleeves are probably the easiest ones I've made because they're just made out of rectangles. First thing I did was set my sewing machine to a basting stitch and then I basted the edges so that I could gather them together for the cuff. After gathering the sleeve, I added a cuff to finish off all of the edges and it ended up like this. Lastly, I just sewed those rectangles into a tube and I attached them to the bodice in just a few different stitches so that they would be secure but still hang loosely. And this is the finished look. I'm so happy with how it turned out and I feel like it's a really easy project for beginner sewers to do. When I designed this dress, I really wanted to try to recreate the essence of the painting in fashion form and in my opinion, I really think I accomplished that, especially with the sleeves and the exposed boning channels. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe to see more sewing videos like this. Thanks for watching!